Joining us now is Ojini Kaoji Okwe with stories trending around the world. She's back. Hello, yes, I'm back. <laughs> Good morning. I didn't go anywhere anyway. I was in Nigeria. <laughs> How are you guys yeah, this morning? Yeah. How's your yeah. weekend? Great. Been back. Thank you. You just brightened up the week for us. Yeah, well, you too with your yellow. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Yeah, I missed you. Yes, I you miss know, you I guys too. You. I'm glad you're back. Thank you. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the release of 137 abducted students of the Air Primary School and Government Secondary School, Kuriga, in the Chiku local government area of Kaduna State. Well, according to the defense headquarters, the students were rescued in Zamfara State in the early hours of Sunday through the joint efforts of the military and local authorities. The governor of the state, Uba Sani, received the students on Sunday evening promising that they will continue to receive psychological counseling and proper medical supervision. I would like to especially uh, appreciate our GOC, General Saraso, for all the effort in ensuring that uh, our children are back home safely. But I'm happy that uh, the children, just like uh, my brother, General Saraso, have just said, uh, they have been uh, very cooperative. They made it clear to the army that uh, they were 137. Because like I told you in the media now before coming here, nobody should know them better than themselves. Uh, strangers who have no connection with our state, who have no connection with their families, have gone to the media with figures that uh, we feel is just a figment of their own imagination. But today I'm happy. What is more important is that the children are back home. All right, uh, the governor there, and he's also, you know, thanked uh, the collaboration of the military and all the security forces for the safe return of the children. I mean, there's a lot of uh, questions about whether or not they were 138 or 137. In that same video, a uh, young girl uh, the, who the governor spoke with uh, said that they were 138, but unfortunately, um, one of their teachers died. If we can play that video for a short moment. Yeah, we are kicking on uh, Ajini. This is two. So the after the the go. They come down go. Eba one day go. Ah one day Ah ah. Who know any about that? They come from the the Latin that talk us me. Amau the 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 Latin that walk with me So say they ni Allah mi chulesa. Eh they ma da mu ni Allah ya ma da suwa acha. We thank God for her life. She did say there in that video that the bandits did not molest her or any of the girls that were abducted. The governor here, as well as security forces, have said that there were 137 students that were released. And so that is the official number. Well, in the meantime, the president welcomed the news of the release of the students and re-emphasized the importance of collaboration between the federal government and states for expected outcomes, especially on matters of security. He commended the National Security Advisor, the security agencies, and the Kaduna State Government for their diligence with which they handled the situation. Well, Tinubu, in a post on X, wrote, I once again assure Nigerians that my administration is deploying detailed strategies to ensure that our schools remain safe sanctuaries of learning and not layers for wanton abductions. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, Atiku Abubakar commended the efforts of those responsible for the release of the school children and called for the strengthening of the security architecture around our schools. His tweet reads in part, we also do not need to wait for the next incident before putting mechanisms in place to forestall it. To this end, I recommend the strengthening of the Safe School Initiative that prioritizes the protection of schools, especially in the areas that are most vulnerable to mass kidnap of school children. But above all, 
there should be an overhaul of the security architecture to meet the demands of the threats facing us. Well, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, in a series of tweets, said the reports of the students' release is reassuring to the nation and their parents. He thanked the government and security agencies for securing the release of the students, urging that every Nigerian must be safe. His tweet reads in part, we must ensure that every Nigerian is safe in Nigeria by not giving terrorists any operating space in our nation. No Nigerian should ever be a captive or hostage anywhere in his fatherland. I encourage every Nigerian in the midst of these dark and fearful nights in our nation where danger seems to be lurking on every corner to remain hopeful for the new dawn of a secure and safe nation, the new Nigeria which is possible. Well, Rufai, I mean, there are other tweets on social media, but I wanted to come to you because, you know, I did read your tweet and your question was quite pertinent. You asked, how is it possible that we keep on hearing the release of these children? Why have we not heard of the arrests of the abductors? And I think that that is the main point here. And, and, and it's pure simple, mm -hmm. Audrey, because you see, I think what we have built, we've built a war ecosystem, a war economy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we're here where we cover the Kagara boys mm -hmm. case. We're here, since I started working in Arise, we've had this episode of kidnapping. I think I can remember about three or four mass abductions like that. And in the end, a deal is reached. You never, for once, hear that the terrorists that took them on were decimated or killed in the attack. All you keep hearing is there were negotiators, they brought the boys back after bringing the children back. That's all. So is it that we are waiting for the next kidnapping to happen? Is it that we are, we are not asking ourselves, where is the next one going to happen? So if you don't do that, and if you keep supporting this one, I mean, you heard what Commodore Olawa when he said that they should come and challenge him. He, not my words, his words, claimed that they paid ransom. Because you can't just say that they gave up the people like that. Mm. And after going through all this risk. So what are we going to do to be able to stop this ecosystem and their accomplices? Because they have a lot of accomplices. There are many cases of you applying an action against them, these terrorists, at the next day, they already have intel. Across board in the villages and all of that. So when are we going to put a stop to it? Is this how we're going to keep shelling out money for people to be able to buy things? I mean, based on Commodore Olawa's assertion that they, they probably pay ransom. So we'd like to ask, why is that we have never heard that the government went in there, after they recovered the people, they went out for those people, they killed them, they hurt them. Yeah, we heard last week, though, that there was a gun duel. We don't know about the injury in Kaduna State. There was okay. some sort of gun duel between the terrorists and the security forces, and they were able to rescue about 16 abducted um, Okay, so uh, that's one case. I'm in happy. Kaduna State, I'm happy. Yeah. But I'm talking about the mass abduction. Yes. The mass abductions. In the case of Kangara, I'm not sure I heard a gun duel. In this case, I'm not sure I heard a gun duel. Because in the end, only God knows how much this cash has moved. Secondly, I would like to call on the NFIU. Can we have an algorithm in place that tracks transactions in these hotspot zones in such a way that if an unusual transaction comes to a certain account that has not been before, we can track the pattern and call these people for questioning. Because you need to be also be able to move this. That's apart from the informal system at which is money changing hands, where you have money in foreign currencies, it's passed across money chains and, 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 and across the African continent. Most of this cash are carried across camels and things like that. Yeah. So we need to have a proper idea because if we do not replace, just like we're talking about the Niger Delta, yes. if we do not replace this ecosystem of theft, of banditry, then it will only continue. Absolutely. I mean, look at one of the stories you're going to say. Look at the Binance case. How can somebody that is arrested in the Nigerian detention mm. escape with another person? And they were guards there. Yeah, you can speak about the Binance the case. The truth really is, you will know. Yeah. And from investigations, there should be some level of complicity. Yes. Let's not deceive ourselves. How can somebody held 
by the Nigerian states. Apparently, he had his passport, his international passport with the DSS. You but obviously, you can so escape I heard, if you apply I heard, for another passport. I heard he DSS. escaped using yes. a Kenyan passport. Oh, with a Kenyan Well, we're not so sure about that. How, I mean, those are one of the That's what they're saying, yeah. So how can somebody hell by the Nigerian state escape? So there's a lot of complicity across the chain. Right. Another question is, I remember when something like this happened on the Onusheng Mbasujo, that Charles Taylor that was held escaped. He they, they, they arrested him back. Because the was like, go straight after them and bring it. So how can somebody that was held by the Nigerian states? Mm -hmm. So is that we can't hold somebody while it goes through his case? Yeah, well. So those are the many complicity we are looking at in the system. And we need yeah. to ask questions. Yeah. People are calling it a uh Prison break season one. But it must, you know, it must be Schofield. We, we, <laughs> Schofield. But we must Schofield. commend the security forces because it was not only in Kaduna State yeah. that um, you know scores were released. I mean, people were released also in uh, Sokoto State. So kudos to the uh, security forces as well. But in Delta State, the Nigerian police force over the weekend confirmed the death of six of its officers who were killed in an ambush a few weeks ago. The ambush was said to have occurred in Ugeli North local government area of the state. Well, according to the spokesman for the police force, the bodies of the six slain officers have been recovered, while the search for six other officers missing in action is ongoing. The Inspector General of Police, Tayode Egbetokun, has directed the deployment of all necessary resources and personnel to apprehend those responsible for killing the officers. The development comes just days after 17 soldiers of the Nigerian army were killed in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. I must say that uh, as a Deltan, I am outraged at these killings and, you know, insecurity going on in my state. Well, I hope that the security forces get their act together and apprehend those responsible for this. I understand that about five of them have been apprehended. Uh, Dr. Abatin. Well, I, I think, again, this is what we say when we talk about the reign of impunity, the reign of anarchy, creeping anarchy in the land, when uniformed officers are no longer safe. 17 soldiers killed, six policemen murdered, you know, in a, a horror forest, we were told, again in Delta State. Mm -hmm. And then six other policemen are also missing. So last week, it was uh, 17 soldiers. Now, this week, although it took the Nigeria police almost a whole month uh, to confirm that these persons died and that another six are miss missing. And then in Imo State, two additional two. policemen Absolutely. were also killed. And, you know, it's very discouraging for people who are in uniform. But each time it happens, we have the uh, defense headquarters saying to investigate and fish out the culprits. You have the police also issuing a statement through their spokesperson saying that the entitlement of these uh, policemen will be paid and that they will be honored when they have police awards later, I think in July, and yes. that the uh, Inspector General of Police has expressed uh, condolences to the affected families. I mean, nobody should die needlessly. Just the same statement that was made, you know, by children who were kidnapped in the uh, Kaduna State and the 16 kidnapped in uh, Sokoto State. That, look, everybody should be safe in this country. And that is the major challenge that government faces. And it's just as well that President Tinubu continues to reassure everyone. I refer to the last paragraph in the statement he issued in the Cardinal case, saying that, look, his government will put strategies in place, but something has to be done very quickly too. Uniformed men should, should be protected. I mean, there, there should be that trust yes. between, you know, uniformed men and the community. But things have gone so all right, so bad in this country that the people themselves do not trust the policemen. And as uh, Commodore Lamumi was on this program was saying, look, there is, uh, everything has been politicized. Everything has been ethnicized. And nobody is safe, not even the people in uh, uniform. That is the level, you know, of uh, anomaly and creeping anarchy uh, that uh, Nigeria, you know, uh, confronts. Um, as for the children who were rescued, well, I think uh, the defense headquarters and all the parties involved, yes, they deserve all the uh, praises, but the thing is to prevent this kind of situation. And of course, nobody believes that money was, did not exchange hands. 
uh, the commodore who was here, Commodore Lahome, you know, who had worked before in defense intelligence said, well, you, you, you know, it doesn't happen like that. People were asking for a ransom of one billion naira. You know, they can't just uh, have a, you know, a good mind and just release the children like that. But it is important that these pupils have been released. Mm -hmm. Some of their parents even died in the process. Yeah. The reports indicate that there was a woman who had four children kidnapped and that the woman became so anxious, she gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what Nigeria does to people. Oh, and that is why, you know, the government has a responsibility to make this environment safe for everybody, whether uniformed men or bloody civilians awesome. who also have rights under the Constitution. We are awesome. not bloody civilians. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not amplify it. We are not bloody civilians. We are just civilians. That, that's, what, that's what the <laughs> uniformed people call it. Uh, call so stop calling us that. <laughs> no. <laughs> do, what, do, do you agree? We, we, are not we reject it. We, we are not bloody absolutely. civilians. We are regal civilians. Well, again, <laughs> may, like may those who have uh, departed in this really sad incident, may their souls rest in peace. We'll take another story. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who will be turning 72 on Friday, March 29th, has cancelled his birthday celebrations and has urged friends and well-wishers across the country not to organize any celebratory event on his behalf or in his name. The president's special advisor on information and strategy, Bayon Onuga, made the announcement in a statement released on Sunday. The president said he appreciates the honor of being the leader of Africa's leading nation, but will use the occasion of his birthday to reflect and rededicate himself to the task of building a more stable, more secure and united Nigeria in the wake of the recent killing of the officers and men of the armed forces and police in Delta State and the recent spate of security breaches by criminal elements in different parts of Nigeria. The president further urged that there should be no form of birthday event and placing of birthday goodwill advertorial messages in newspapers, radio or television and enjoined friends and associates who may wish to place goodwill advertorials to kindly donate the money to a charity organization of their choice. In his name, you were saying something. Good one. I think this is completely very, very, very amazing, Vimbai. Very, I mean, this is so statesmanly. Yeah. I mean, this is the, uh, I mean, I feel like it's the best news we've had so far very in this. One. I mean, very the fact that he's also asked for them yeah. to make donations to charity, I think it is. But it's not the first time we've seen, you know, the president at the time, uh, I believe when he turned 70, he cancelled his birthday because of the Kaduna attacks. It's not the first time yeah. we are seeing that he's sensitive about, uh, you know, situations like this and the state of the nation as well. We wish him a happy birthday, which is coming happy, up uh, on... Happy, uh, <laughs> happy 72. 72. Yeah, should we, should 72. We say, you said there shall be implications. Well, ah, he said, no, said no, just no donate to charity. You know, uh, uh, Go uh, ahead. Our brother is a young man yeah. looking fit for 72, you know, 72 yeah. years yes. old. I think yes. it's so important to read the room at times like this. I love it. What's done, and we haven't really gotten that consistently right. um, from this administration. So it's a good gesture. The question is, will people listen? You know, this is the time that people use to try and elicit favor mm -hmm. and to try and get into the good books. So hopefully yes. the people he is appealing to will will listen yeah. uh, and, and will do the needful. Um, but it's in, in light of all the other developments that, that are going on, uh, definitely a good one, a positive uh, development. Absolutely, I agree with you. But you know, these are uh, our television stations, Dr. Abati, and the newspapers, <laughs> you know, they receive a lot of those adverts uh, at this at this time. And, you know, so I don't know what will happen. Uh, will people said, listen, like, be by acts. But the choice that the president has made in the matter I love is it. in keeping with the times. Wow. Yes. I mean, he's commander-in-chief. He has lost... Uh, you know, 17 soldiers in uh, Delta. Absolutely. He has lost uh, 12 policemen, you know, six died, six missing. So this is definitely not the time, you know, for any loud celebration. And in terms of, you know, modesty that he has been preaching, I think it's good signaling on the part of the uh, president. But, uh, you know, it's just that, yes, I get your point. Media <laughs> houses will have, you know, made a kill yes. from advertisement. But... I think the choice that he has made is in order, yes. you know, uh, but uh, I know that, uh, well, I don't know, uh, <laughs> you know, 
Maybe, maybe you celebrate. Talk now. You celebrate the president <laughs> yeah, for now. us. Some yeah, yeah. That's that's you now. I don't know why I always have to be put into this mess. This yeah. But yeah. you are the seventy-two. <laughs> you can provide implications. What is the emphasis with seventy-two? <laughs> Speak your mind. Uh, no, I say. No, right, we can have a small <laughs> get together. Get but the president has won against it. What is the problem? We are not making noise. We just do it here. No, the money that you are going to use will hold on. Colloquial. The president said the money you use to buy. Cake and implications just yeah. go to charity, charity. No, donate well, the well, money well, to charity. Well, all right, good, president. good one on the president, and again, congratulations! <laughs> Happy 72nd birthday. birthday. Well, Happy all right, birthday, Mr. President. Well, all right, we'll take our final story in the United Kingdom. As the world continues to send words of support to the Princess of Wales, Catherine, after she revealed last Friday that she had been diagnosed with cancer, a former royal spokesman, Paddy Haverson, has asked the public to give the Prince and Princess of Wales time to heal, saying that the world has to remember that they are not just an institution, but also human beings and a family. Catherine revealed on Friday that she had begun treatment after weeks of speculation about her condition. She said cancer was discovered after she underwent abdominal surgery. Details of the cancer have not been disclosed, but Kensington Palace says it is confident the princess will make full recovery. The news comes six weeks after King Charles paused his public appearances following a cancer diagnosis himself. Catherine has not attended any official events since Christmas and has faced public speculation about her health since her operation in January. A photograph of her and her children released on Mother's Day was met with a frenzy on social media due to inconsistencies in the picture. You know, a lot of people that have thrilled uh, Catherine on social media have apologized to her, and I think that it is important to be really careful and sensitive in cases Has like Kim this. Kim Kardashian apologized. I, I mean, I, I don't know if Kim Kardashian is part of well, the, the people that, that would have apologized. For Kate. Yes, but why? But you know, she's the master, she's the queen of Photoshop. What's her issue at this point, if that's the problem, Kim Kardashian? Because she was thrilled because of that picture that she um, put out there on social media, Catherine. And, you know, they said that she put the job her children in the picture, but she came out to apologize that she does experiment sometimes. But, you know, the most important thing is that at this moment, we wish her, you know, quick recovery. Uh, I don't think anybody Bimbai. believes that she's the one who photoshopped the picture. I think a lot of the outrage is the fact that the royal family do always seem to find somebody to throw under the bus when there's a mishap. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that somebody who's just gotten such a life-threatening diagnosis is being thrown under the bus mm -hmm. for all of these PR gaffes that continue right. to happen with the royal family. Well, well, first, they were asking where is Kate. Second, she showed up. They yeah. said she photoshopped yes. the picture. Then she came and said, oh, uh, she has cancer and she's taking a preventive uh, chemotherapy, and then people started trolling her, Again. you know. So it's the awesome burden of the crown, yeah. you know, big institution, but we, we almost also realize that these people are human beings. Absolutely. Three members of the royal family down with uh, cancer, okay. trying to treat cancer. So, but it's uh, the burden you get when mm -hmm. you belong to such a, an institution. In fact, uh, you know, some of the papers today were even saying that the Russian and the Chinese uh, the one engaged in disinformation, mm -hmm. that they are part of it, you mm -hmm. know, just to destabilize the British uh, society. So this is a body that people in high places, they are there. We wish her healing yes, and we, recovery. Yes, we wish her quick I mean, healing. My, my, my heart goes out seconds. to you, Kate. It's not an easy one. And also to the King of England, it's not an easy one. Once people are sick, you know, I think you want all them the privacy to go Absolutely. through their illness. And secondly, empathy. Forget all of that. You see... There is nothing to this life. Mm -hmm. If she, you know, survived this or if otherwise happened, then you will know that death is more than life. Death and, is and more death, than and life. And death ends our humanity. Right. So in the spirit of this, let's just let her be. Let her breathe. Absolutely. Please. On that let's note, forget all of this. On that note, sickness yeah. doesn't know public figure. Absolutely. Please. I like that. Sickness yeah, it doesn't, doesn't know public figure. Especially figures. cancer. Yeah, no, cancer doesn't know anybody. But thank please. God, thank please, God that is is no longer a death sentence yeah. as before. No, I'd no, like no, to yeah. we're all human. Absolutely. Yeah. Human. Absolutely. But I'd like to thank you all for a great analysis on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.